assalamu alaikum once again to all of you now we are going to discuss the theory of connectionism there are three different names through which this theory is known it is known as connectionism it is also known as emergentism and this is also known as associative cognitive creed so these are the three names which are usually associated with this theory of language learning <coughs> connectionism associative cognitive creed and emergentism again as was the case with some other theories we discussed earlier behaviorism and so on this theory connectionism again it is not just a theory of language acquisition it is a theory of psychology in general and later on this theory was applied to language acquisition so through this process through this theory the process of language learning was explained now through the three names connectionism emergentism and associative cognitive creed we try to understand mean what is the underlying concept of these theories first the theory of connectionism was presented by an american psychologist whose name is edward thorndike edward thorndike who was an american psychologist he presented this theory and he named it as connectionism so from the very term connectionism what idea do you get connections connectionism okay learning yes learning the basic principle according to this is learning takes place through developing some connections connections between what surroundings surroundings, surroundings. Words, objects, connection between the surrounding and the mind Something cognitive like, uh, things that are made but uh, this there is by how these things share in our mind in a sequence ji yeah, i mean how does our mind process information how does our mind develop connections and how do we develop those connections what is the cognitive process which is responsible for developing those connections and what features are there in developing those connections what are the aspects so we will discuss here in this connectionism another name of this connectionism is emergentism that language emerges out so Emerge, emergentism according to this language according to this mean concept language is not learnt through that innate process which chomsky says that we have got an innate ability to learn the language and we have got an inborn ability according to emergentism no we do not have an, that inborn ability but it is because of the interaction between the so i mean between the environment and our mental cognitive processes that the language emerges out automatically a process cognitive process takes place in our mind and through that process language emerges out and what is the main mean what are the two main features which are responsible for this emergence of the language the two important features are frequency and regularity and same are the are the two procedures which are which play a central role or a pivotal role in developing connections between the atmosphere between the surrounding between the context and our mental cognitive processes so the interaction between mean according to this connectionism or emergentism language learning takes place because of interaction now interaction not only between people interaction between the society mean the social context where that language is being used and our mind which processes that information so according to emergentism or connectionism we get knowledge of the language from the society from the surroundings but we do not accept it as it is our mind performs certain functions and those cognitive processes when they are performed then we learn the language then we acquire the language that's why the third name is of this theory is associative cognitive creed that language is a process which involves or language learning is a process which involves two steps the step of association and the second step of cognition associative cognitive creed first association mean from the context from the surroundings from the environment we develop certain associations and then those associations are cognitively processed by our mind and then as a result of it we acquire language 
now the two important features frequency and regularity they play an important role so those elements of language which frequently occur in the context in the surroundings our mind processes those information that information and then it processes that so because of that interaction that cognitive process our mind develops connections and then our mind learns the language now the further explanation of what are those cognitive processes which are responsible for language acquisition or language learning we will discuss now that what are those certain one is this already that as we have discussed that frequency and regularity that one important feature is frequency that we should have frequent connection with the language or those connections which frequently or those things those aspects which frequently occur our mind processes those quickly so frequency and then regularity those features should also occur regularly just like as if you just apply to the first language acquisition as you said that we find language in the outer surroundings in the environment in the context and those features are coming to us frequently and regularly those words those structures those utterances so because of that frequent exposure and because of that regular exposure the those patterns are occurring regularly our mind processes those but the actual processing that cognitive process that takes place in our mind and through this process we acquire the language so our mind develops associations our mind develops associations and associations are developed because of frequency just like even in our everyday life a person who meets you frequently you develop an association with that and those with whom you do not meet frequently regularly you do not develop your relationship your connections with that and similarly if a person is inconsistent in his behavior sometimes he is very pleasant sometimes very angry you do not develop connection with that person but if the attitude of that person is regular I mean regular mean similar most of the time if he is pleasant so mostly he is pleasant you find that okay that person is really nice so you develop your connection with that so any sort of connection whether it is human connection or linguistic connection that occurs because of two features that is frequency and regularity regularity mean if you find one feature regularly just like in language you find one feature regularly that after uh, for past tense always ed form is used with the verb with the with a particular form of verb that is the first form of the verb so when that thing regularly happens so because of that regularity your mind processes that okay if i have to say something about the past so i have to use simple past it becomes predictive yes yes and that prediction your mind predicts that this is the mental cognitive process of prediction that your mind predicts that in this situation okay since this is something about past so i have to use past form and your mind develops a connection for past i have to used the second form that is with ed and sometimes even our mind processes it to such an extent that we make mistake just like we said drived instead of drove because our mind when we are at the initial stages of language learning our mind associates that much that the ed is the symbol or mean the is the, is the identification of past that even with some other words where we do not use ed to show the past form we still our mind processes that so sometimes that processing also causes errors but gradually with the passage of time when our mind develops some further connections or constructions so we get to know the right structure sir can we relate competence and performance i will come to it later on but first with this example i just want to explain that according to connectionism language is construction based so language learning is based upon constructions and how do we construct the language in our mind we construct language through frequency and through regularity and during this process we construct and we reconstruct just like first we construct that okay for past form we always use d or ed so we learned this rule and we develop this association our mind develop this association and then we learn the language I mean this part like the past form but we later on when we get more exposure and we find out that it is not always 
D or ED is not always the symbol of the past form. So, our mind reconstructs the grammar. So, partly we know that okay, yes, D, E, D that is the symbol of the past form, but then it reconstructs okay, sometime it is not. So, there is another rule, and then we get to know that rule. So, our mind constructs and reconstructs. And how does it construct and reconstruct? Because of regular interaction between the social context, between the environment and the mental cognitive process. So, when we get further knowledge that okay, sometimes it is drove, sometimes it is broke also the second form. So, our mind reconstructs. Again, we are getting input from the outer world. So, that input which we are getting from the outer world, our mind cognitively processes that information. And this associative cognitive process is responsible for language learning. So, this is the you can say the underlying principle as I explained this, this, this is because of this reason that the theory of connectionism is also known as associative cognitive creed and the title also connectionism mean our mind keeps developing connections when it gets exposure and those connections keep on strengthening or keep on the mind keeps on constructing and reconstructing those rules those regulations and it keeps developing connections in itself that okay this is for this thing this is for that thing and this these connections are not related only to the mean only to the you can say grammatical aspects these connections are also related to other social discourse aspects of language also just like you have learnt language in the natural context so automatically your mind knows that what sort of language you should use with your parents what sort of language you should use when you appear in an interview what sort of what sort of language you should use when you are with your friends so your mind has even processed this information also because of regular interaction between the social context and the cognitive process so since from childhood our mind processes this information not only the information of the language itself that is the rules of the language but the discourse aspects of the language or the social aspects of the use of language that in what context what type of language is appropriate we know all this so that's why in particular situations we use language accordingly we do not mean make that much as long as we are the native speakers and when we are non native speakers definitely sometimes we feel this we are not aware of the context and sometimes we use language in such a way which is not appropriate to that context just like in case of english just saying someone okay bring me a glass of water in an English context, this is not appropriate. In a Pakistani context, that is appropriate. Because we are in the habit of saying things more directly. So, nobody minds it. But in the English context, grammatically, this sentence is completely correct. But if you say this in an English context, it is taken as a, as a sign of rudeness. That this is really rude. This person does not know. He does not have I mean, the knowledge that how to request for something. So, in English, yes, disrespect is an element of disrespect. So, in an English context, I mean the social understanding of the language tells us that we should ask, could you bring me a glass of water or would you mind bringing me a glass of water. So, even this aspect our mind also processes because of the regular interaction between the social context and the cognitive processes.